What's going on guys, Shin here from Cezero Media. In today's episode, we're talking about fender mirrors. What are they, why are they on cars, and what are the pros and cons of running fender mirrors? In the previous episode of Datsun 280Z build series, I installed these fender mirrors. These are iconic JDM items. I always wanted to run on my cars. I even considered putting these on the FDRX7, but when I acquired the Datsun 280Z, the SRD platform, I absolutely had to install these fender mirrors. When I installed these fender mirrors, I noticed that not many people were familiar with fender mirrors in general. As a kid who grew up in Japan in the 90s, fender mirrors were everywhere, from sports cars to daily driven cars to taxis, all had fender mirrors. And I started looking around online and realized that unless you have visited or lived in Japan or you lived in the UK back in the 50s you probably have never really seen these fender mirrors so in today's episode I'm going to talk about pros and cons of fender mirrors as well as quick history behind them and the reasons why they have disappeared for the most part Why are car manufacturers here in the USA never really implemented fender mirrors overseas in UK up until about 1950s, almost all cars in the streets of UK had fender mirrors. Over in Japan, the government required you to run fender mirrors on your car, so you literally couldn't pass an inspection without fender mirrors. So if you watch some of the older films where American cars were featured in Japanese movies, you notice that like a Ford Mustang would have fender mirrors because that's just the way it had to be for these cars to be street legal. Why the British has pretty much shifted away from fender mirrors and converted to door mirrors on most of the cars by 50s, Japan over here in the 80s is still enjoying fender mirrors along with Tamagotchi and Gojira. How do you even say Tamagotchi in English? But anyways, we're now in the 80s. Japan is on its little island in its own little bubble making cars with fender mirrors. However, Japan wanted to start exporting cars to foreign countries like the US. But in a country where cars with fender mirrors were never really manufactured, people thought fender mirrors from Japan were ugly. So what Japanese companies started doing was producing the same exact car one with fender mirror for Japanese market and one with door mirrors for the American market. And the Japanese buyers were complaining that they could only buy fender mirrored versions when they wanted door mirrors. And now we're gonna talk about pros and cons of fender mirrors, but before we get to that, please smash the like button if you like the video and share the video if you feel like any of your friends should be educated in regards to fender mirrors. Reason number one people prefer fender mirrors over door mirrors is the fact that because fender mirrors sit so far forward, it's already in your vision. You don't need to move your head around to look at the mirror like a traditional door mirror. If you sit in this Datsun and look forward, you're naturally going to look at the fender mirrors as you look at the road. Therefore, you're focused on what's in front of you, but at the same time, you're aware of what's going on behind you and around you. Benefit number two is that fender mirrors mirrors do not stick out further than the body line like a door mirror does and this is very important especially in tight streets of Europe or in this case Japan where you literally have to fold in your mirrors to get through some of the streets and for that reason a lot of Japanese cars built for the JDM market come with automatic folding mirrors. I've driven Skylines, I've driven Evos, I've driven WRXs in Japan and they all come with automatic folding mirrors. There have been many instances when I'm driving in the narrow streets of Japan I literally cannot get by without folding in the mirrors. So I hit the automatic folding mirror button and the mirror folds in and I can go in without any problem. But if you have a car with fender mirrors where the mirrors do not stick out past the body line, you don't need to do any of that. You just go through it because your car is as narrow as the body line. Another benefit of fender mirrors is that it gives you an idea of how wide the front end of the car is. Simply because the fender mirrors stick out pretty much to where the body line is and pretty much where the front wheel is. So you get a better understanding of how wide the car is and where the front wheel is. Similar to like the Mercedes-Benz logo that sticks up on the hood, you get an idea of how long the nose is. Because fender mirrors are installed way in front of you towards the front end of the car, you're essentially eliminating blind spots. And this 
is debatable because every fender mirror size is a little bit different and you're gonna have different uh, performance depending on the fender mirror size but for the most part by extending that mirror location further forward you're able to have wider angle of vision therefore eliminating blind spots and last but not least fender mirrors by theory creates less drag because it is part of the body instead of the door mirror sticking out from side of the car. Now this is somewhat debatable because cars with fender mirrors are designed and built in the 70s or 60s. Those cars in general don't have good aerodynamics to begin with, whether it's got door mirrors or fender mirrors. I bet you a 70s car like this with no mirrors whatsoever would have higher drag than like a Toyota Prius from 2019 with 10 door mirrors sticking out the side. Now let's talk about the downside of fender mirrors and I think the number one reason why these things have become extinct is simply due to the danger that it causes to a pedestrian during pedestrian to vehicle collision. If you imagine there's this piece of metal sticking out of the hood, the car would hit the pedestrian, pedestrian would come onto the hood and his neck would get caught on the metal, breaking a neck or breaking a rib or whatever. So these are serious hazard if you are in a pedestrian to vehicle collision. Reason number two fender mirrors are not so common nowadays is simply because of its ugliness. A lot of people thought fender mirrors were ugly and I can see that it kind of destroys the flow of the car, the design of the car up in the front, especially in motor cars where the hood is a lot shorter. Even in the Datsun world there are people who prefer fender mirrors, people who prefer long stack fender mirrors, short stack fender mirrors like the one here, people who like door mirrors, people who like no mirrors. So it is complete personal opinion but the majority of the world did not like the fender mirror design. Same reason why Japanese car manufacturers in the 80s had to switch to door mirrors to adapt to the foreign market and also the same reason why the Japanese government started allowing door mirrors as well as fender mirrors to pass inspection in the 80s. Another downside is that because fender mirrors are so far out on the hood, objects in the mirror become super tiny and you kind of have to squint into it if you have smaller fender Fender mirrors. And because it's sitting outside of the car on the hood, adjustment is kind of a pain. You literally have to sit on the driver's side and let somebody else adjust it for you to adjust the thing and cleaning it is also a pain. Speaking of cleaning fender mirrors, Nissan made a model called Lepardo which I don't really know how to pronounce in English because it was a JDM only model. I guess it would be like a Leopard. If that's the case, that's a very ugly name for a car, like a Cougar. But anyways, Nissan Lepardo had wipers on the fender mirrors to make sure it was nice and clean similar to the wipers on the headlights back in the days. So that's kind of cool. Who knows where the technology would be today if fender mirrors were still a thing. So those are the pros and cons of fender mirrors. But despite these negatives that comes with running fender mirrors, if you go to Japan, you still see cars like the Toyota Century or Toyota Crown running around Japan with fender mirrors. When you look at Japanese taxis, most of them still have fender mirrors. So why do taxis in Japan still run fender mirrors to this day? First of all, you gotta realize that taxi drivers don't drive their cars the way we normal people do from point A to point B. They're literally in their car all day, all night, and they would like to minimize the stress on their body as much as possible. If you have the mirror up ahead of you, you're not moving your neck left to right, checking the rear of the car as much. This allows the driver to minimize neck movement, therefore reducing the stress on your neck muscles. When Japanese taxis have door mirrors, the driver has to look left and right, obviously to check behind them, but this neck movement to some passengers might seem like he or she is peaking or eavesdropping. To a lot of Westerners and even to myself, this might seem ridiculous, but coming from a culture where people are very private and they want to mind their own business, and also with like yakuzas and gangs sometimes sitting in the back of the taxis, taxi drivers wanted to minimize their neck movement as much as possible. And lastly, again, because Japanese streets are so narrow and taxi drivers often go into these narrow streets because the passenger broke his leg 
and he needs to be dropped off in front of his apartment on a street that is six feet wide, you want the car to be as narrow as possible. By installing these fender mirrors, the driver does not have to fold in the mirror in and out all the time, and at the same time, the car is able to be as narrow as it possibly can to go through these narrow streets. So for these reasons, Japanese taxi drivers still to this day swear by fender mirrors. Even the brand new 2020 Japan taxis still come with fender mirrors. Now that you're well educated on fender mirrors and hit the like button already, let's finish up the video by talking about what's called side under mirrors. You may have seen these if you have visited Japan recently and it became a thing since around 2005. These mirrors are more common on SUVs and trucks as a form of blind spot elimination and it is usually only installed on the passenger side of the vehicle. So sometimes in Japan, you'll see a car with door mirrors as well as fender mirror on the passenger side to increase that visibility when you're in a larger vehicle. I can totally use this mirror on my Dodge Ram that has been lifted with a cap on the back. I literally have no visibility whatsoever. While these side under mirrors are functional, I'm sure, it is again a little ugly, it's gonna add cost to manufacturing of the vehicle, so it is eventually going to be replaced by camera systems. So that's it for today guys, I hope that cleared up a single to you about what fender mirrors are and why it's installed in cars. Let me know what you think about fender mirrors though. Do you like these on my Datsun? Would you run it on your cars? So that is it for today guys, thanks for tuning in again, I hope that was educational, please hit the like button and subscribe button, and please leave comments in the comment section below for any new ideas, topics you want me to cover as well. See you in the next video, peace.